Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. Barack Obama's infomercial last night drew 26.4 million viewers, which would make it one of the top three TV shows of the week when it's all counted out. Outrageous. And uh, I'm wondering if you've seen it. I'm wondering if you have a reaction to it at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Like us 101 is just an hour away, and we'll be taking your calls for the professor coming up in about an hour here on the Tom Likas Show. Let's say hello here to Dan. Hello, Dan. Hello, Tom. Yes. Tom, I've got one question for you. If you can answer it, I'll change from voting for mccain Pale into Obama. I'm in medical school. I've got over $120,000 in school debt. My wife's an attorney and has, still has over 100000 in school debt. Collectively, we'll be making over $250,000. Uh, why should I have to pay for people who couldn't take the time to money to buy a house and bought a house that's too big? They couldn't. That are too lazy. You're paying for that. Education. Let me stop right there. You're paying for it now. Oh, for the lazy people? You're paying for people's houses, people who bought houses and couldn't afford them right now. And I'm going to be paying more if Obama gets in. Uh, I don't think you're going to be paying more. I think you're going to continue paying as you are now. My taxes are going up. Your taxes are going up uh, partly to fund a tax decrease for the middle class. I know. I, I don't understand why I should have to do that. Well, uh, I, and I I make more money than you and your wife put together. Absolutely. And, and I'm voting for Obama. And as I have said, and I, I, I by the way, you're going to vote for McCain, whatever I say. It doesn't matter. So I'm not trying to convince you of anything. Um, right? I think Obama is an insane, brilliant person. I've watched him for eight years. Eight years ago, I said he'll be the first African-American. I think he's going to win. But I, the bottom line is, I don't understand why I should have to pay more when I'm the one that is taking my time. I haven't bought a house yet because I've been trying to save. Well, again, though, it is, it, it is not. Let me repeat to you. I agree with what you're saying, but it was George W. Bush who went on television and insisted that Congress pass a bailout bill to bail out the banks and to buy those toxic mortgages. Uh, Obama's not in office yet. You're already paying for that today. Today. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with it you. Is uh, not, it will not be the more. election of Obama that's going to cause you to pay for that. No, I, I'm going to end up paying more, is what I'm saying. I don't Obama agree. I, by the way, I don't agree with that. I think you're going to pay the same. <laughs> which, See, is, a, which is too much. That's a very Democrat thing to say when they talk about all the No, I, by the way, Dan, let me, let me repeat to you something I've said many times. I don't think we should pay one penny to bail those people out. And I don't agree with Obama helping people out. Uh, who uh, I, I've said this on this program many, many times. Uh, I believe that uh, people who bought houses that were more expensive than what they could afford uh, deserve to lose their houses and should lose their houses. And I think that uh, we need to go through that kind of pain in order that it not be repeated. Did you hear Bill Clinton last night say it's time for the poor people to get their chance? That's what he said. Well, the yeah, politicians say things like that. Bill Clinton is not running for office. No, but he's talking about Obama's plan. I mean, that, that, I, I heard that, and I'm just... Like, I don't what? care what Bill Clinton says. I care about what Barack Obama says. Uh, well, he's there supporting Barack yeah, Obama. Yeah, and guys Obama like, Obama guys like you love to pull uh, Bill Clinton out of the past and start <laughs> using him because uh, clearly you can't get any traction attacking Obama, so what you do is you go back to Clinton. No, I'm just saying from last night. Who cares? Uh, were, I couldn't were, care less what Bill Clinton said. Well, uh, when Bill Clinton, me. when Bill Clinton is running for office again, you get back to me, okay? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Elizabeth on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Before I go into what I was just gonna say, this last caller, it what would it matter paying more taxes if our dollar's worth more money and it gets the entire economy out of this rut? Um, Period. Anyways, Tom, I think you're absolutely amazing. You're fabulous, and you're a genius. So um, I did watch last night. I am 28. This is going to be the first time I am going to vote because I feel that Barack Obama is absolutely amazing. When he speaks, 
he just he gives me chills and it's just amazing and it's been eight years since I'm, I've been able to say that I would be proud to be an American um, I think he's going to do great things for this country and great things for everybody um, I think people need to get out there and when you see bumper stickers or signs on people's doors or things like that for McCain and Palin voice it to them say why what are you doing vote for Barack Obama I mean if he's going to help all of us you know the people that make all this money and things like that wouldn't you rather eventually make more and be able to invest and well you know, that's how that's how I dollars? see it I I did better paying higher taxes during Bill Clinton's administration than I've done the past eight years it's a fact Right, and you did mention that you also made the most money that you ever made there at that point in time yes. by investing, correct? That's correct. Yeah, see, I'm an avid listener. I love you. You're great. So I just want everybody to get out there. If you have, you know, you're going to vote for Barack Obama, tell, you know, just like you said last night, go tell five more people, call more people. You know, so I see people on the side of the road with their, you know, on their bumper stickers or whatever. I pull up next to them, honk my horn, and just go, please vote Barack Obama. We need this. If you guys enjoy what's been going on the past eight years, I I don't know why, but go for it. But we need a change. No matter what happens, we need to try it and see what happens. It's going to be four years, so let's see what he can do. I agree with so. you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for the call. It's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, James. How you doing? Doing great. Well, let me, I have a good question for you. You see, I'm 19 years old. I've just started in a broker firm with American Environmental. It's basically green energy. And I was watching Obama last night, and he said that he's going to be putting a lot of money into renewable energy. What do you think about that? Um, I think that's a good idea. If we're going to spend money on something, I think well, we should certainly uh, encourage the development of alternative energies, and uh, uh, that means uh, wind, solar, what they call clean coal, which isn't all that clean. Um, and uh, I, I do think that's a good idea. There's no doubt uh, developing cars that run on natural gas, as Boone Pickens has suggested, all good. I think so, too, because, you know, we do need to eliminate. It's like paying somebody, okay, you know what, We're gonna, I'm going to pay you five bucks to kick me in the butt, but I'm going to see you tomorrow. So here I am today. Here's right. my five bucks. You're going to kick me in the butt? That's basically what my boss says. So, you know, I'm all for you. I'm with you. I've been listening to you for a couple of years now. I'm a little kid, but, you know, you're a great man, and we'll see what Obama can do with this country. I know he's going to win. Um, you know what, you know, my dad was born and raised a Republican, he raised me, but I see Obama, you know, he's making all these great changes, and of course I just got this job, so he's going to be, you know, dumping a lot of money into this project, and I hope he wins, and so basically that's it. All right, James, thank you for that. Roy is listening to our show in Chicago, live on his iPhone, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's going great. I love your show. Um, listen, uh, I did not see the I did not see the broadcast last night. I'm like you though. You know, I'm a little more liberal on the social issues. Right. Pretty uh, pretty fiscally conservative. Uh, I, Barack Obama hasn't quite captivated me, uh, nor has McCain. Uh, you know, if I were to choose today, I'd probably uh, I'd probably be an Obama guy. But I'm still a little on the fence. What's uh, What's your advice to somebody like myself, Tom? Well, uh, I don't agree with everything Barack Obama has to say, uh, but there have been a couple of things that I've said. Uh, and that I'm only half kidding, believe me. Uh, one is, uh, I want the president to be somebody who is smarter than I am. Yeah, gotcha. And so when I see John McCain, and especially Sarah Palin, they don't pass that litmus test. No, uh, I agree. Sarah Palin's pretty janky up on the up on the you know the podium there. She's you know uh, the whole the whole hockey mom and Joe janky Sixth and thing. skanky. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I agree, Tom. That's number one. Number two, uh, I will not vote for anyone who cannot pronounce the following words. Nuclear and pundit. <laughs> if you can't pronounce those words, I will not vote for you. On that basis, uh, McCain and Palin do not pass the litmus test. Jeez. And and number three, John McCain admitted on Meet the Press this week, voting with George Bush, not 90% of the time, 92% of the time. Wow, yeah. and and how, how how's it going the last eight years? No, not very well, Tom. Well, and, well, and that's so. Be, voting for John McCain means you're voting for even more of that. Yeah, gotcha, totally. Would so you, the, there's you, three good reasons right there. I gotcha, totally. Would you would you consider yourself a pretty more pretty much a libertarian? Yes. 
Great, great. And I have one more question for you. What's your stance on gun control? I am a Second Amendment advocate because as a, as a libertarian, um, I believe this. By the way, though, I feel the same way about drugs that I feel about guns. I, I completely agree. Making them illegal is not going to stop them. It's only going to make them more expensive. It's a simple economic argument. And uh, making guns illegal would simply drive the price higher and make it more likely that somebody would beat me over the head to take what I have to buy guns, just like they do with drugs. One last thing. What uh, if, if, if Barack Obama wins and he doesn't do one thing, what do you think that thing is going to be? If he wins and doesn't do what well, he's got, he's never going to meet everybody's expectations. Agreed, agreed. The expectations for him are so high, it's off the bar graph. And I think just the way uh, Bill Clinton got spanked two years after he was elected in 1994 mm -hmm. with the re so-called Republican Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how good Obama is, he's never going to be able to meet the expectations of the people who have these high hopes. Agreed. And that's I think that this is going to be the big surprise for a lot of people. They're going to say, he's not as good as I thought he would be, no matter how good he is. Yeah, and history shows that. I think that's what, that, that's my prediction of what will happen. I'm sure we'll look back on what I'm saying right now. Maybe we'll play it back at some point in the future when you start hearing all the criticism of Obama. That will begin around January 21st. <laughs> okay, Okay, I think that's it. You can blow me up, Tom. I certainly will. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. We are 45 minutes away from Lycus 101. That's coming up at the top of the hour. We'll get ready with your questions for your professor. And we'll start straight up at the top of the hour on the Tom Lycus Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. The Barack Obama infomercial drew 26.4 million viewers to primetime last night. It will be. One of the top three shows on television this week. Did you see it? What do you think about that? Let's say hello to Liz on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Liz. I have, I have a question. I, my, my marriage is in trouble. My husband's a Republican and I'm a Democrat. And there's one issue that might sway him. Miss most of the infomercial last night, so can you help me? I don't know. What's the question? The question is, is the 250000 gross or net? Has that been established that's yet? gross. No, that's gross. Ooh, then we're in trouble. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. So you, you and your husband make over a quarter million a year together? Is that the deal? Yes, but a, but a lot of it is rental properties, and so the money goes back into the, the mortgages, so we, we don't end up with the money. Well, you do end up with the money because uh, you will own those houses when you're all done. Well, you're right. You're right. Now, you know, my my bottom line is a lot of Republicans, I think, are selfish because they're only thinking for themselves. Whether this is that way or not, I'm still a Democrat because I think sometimes we need to think about our society and not just about our own selfish needs. Well, yeah, I frankly, where, I, th know. I think, you see, I'm a little, I'm somewhere in between. I think that by thinking more about our society, we may also meet our needs in a better way than we've been meeting in the last eight years. Uh, I agree. I agree. 100%. I don't yep. think raising taxes on rich people is necessarily going to be the end of our society. On the contrary, uh, I think it's going to save our society because we need to pay, you know, it's the way rich people, uh, get rich and stay rich is by making and selling products to people. And if people cannot afford to buy those products, what happens to the rich people? You know, but I don't think all the rich people are that smart because all they're thinking is about their their own well, income. Uh, I, I, I believe me, there's a lot more rich people uh, who are smart about this than you think. I mean, just think about all the Hollywood people who are supporting Obama. Ah, good point. I hadn't thought about that. Oprah Winfrey supports Obama. She makes, what, $300 million a year? Yep. 
Well, you got lots of good points, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me. Sure. Hey, I wanted to talk about, they throw around these labels of fiscal conservative and tax and spend liberal. And just looking back, as far back as Reagan, who was a fiscal conservative, when he left office, it was $200 billion deficit. And George Bush the first, $300 billion deficit. And we get a tax and spend liberal in there like Clinton, and we have a $200 billion surplus when he leaves office. Then we go back to George Bush the second, and you see where we're at today. So what do you really want? Do you want a surplus or do you want a deficit? Right. And because Democrats realize that taxes have to be raised to pay down those deficits, uh, it leaves them open to criticism from the Republicans. Uh, and knowing that the public has a short memory and doesn't like to pay any attention to politics, then they will continue to label the Democrats as so-called tax and spend liberals. But the reality is, Democrats frequently have to raise taxes to pay for the excesses of the Republicans who preceded them. Exactly. Exactly. And then they create these problems and they don't want to clean up their messes. It's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. All right, could you blow me up, Tom? Here you go, Mike. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Doing great. Hey, um, so to start off with, I don't consider myself Democrat or Republican. Um, and I'm 26, so this is my third election I'll be involved with, but probably the first time I've actually paid attention to any of the you know, candidates because I, 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 I think they're all crooked in some way, shape, or form, so obviously I can't agree 100% with anybody. Um, but my question is, and actually a more helping question, but I, I, I kind of lean more toward Obama than anybody. Um, and so when people try to argue against him to me, uh, because I don't know as much or, you know, I, I, maybe I don't remember as much as I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV, I can't argue, uh, back at them. I don't have a, a lot of re rebuttal. So when they start arguing with me and telling me his connections with Bill Ayers and all this, what can I come back with? Well, you know? first of all, first of all, there is no connection and this is a red herring designed to take you away from what's actually uh, going on in this election. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to take you off point. Here's well, the point. Why, that's why I assume, but I, just, I don't know what to come back with other than what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, the, the country is broke. Yeah. And it is after eight years of George W. Bush, six of those years with Republican majorities in the House and Senate. And this is what Republicans don't want to talk about. And I agree. That's why instead they like to say that uh, Obama's a socialist or he has connections to Bill Ayers. Or, uh, they, 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 what is this connection? Well, they, they keep saying some, some kind of banquet he held with Bill Ayers in 2003 or something, you know. And what do you think they talked about and blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, what, what, if they have any information on what the two of them talked about, let me know what that know. is. <laughs> the fact that you were at a party with somebody proves absolutely nothing. I've been, exactly at, I've, I've been at parties with the most outrageous people of, of every persuasion. And it does not prove that I'm connected to them or am even friendly with them. Yeah. You know, I'm glad to hear also that you're no on Proposition 8, because I think seeing all those, I, I call them hypocrites to me, on the side of the road saying yes on Proposition 8, that's probably turned me against McCain more than anything, just because I'm, I'm, they disgust me, you know? Yeah. It's supposed to be these religious people, and then they think they have the right to, to do that. It just it angers me. I, I, to I, I totally agree with you, but that, that's that got to be your response. By the way, uh, your response because should also be Obama's winning, and you're just bitter about it. <laughs> That's a good. I like that. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> Which Thanks they are. Tom. Uh, James, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. I just wanted, just a quick comment. I just wanted to tell you, thanks for having the balls to say that I make over $250,000 a year, but I realize that a Republican is not going to make me more wealthy. I'm so tired of hearing friends of mine who make over 250 a year say that, oh, you know, Obama's not the answer because he's just going to tax us more. I could just puke. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate that. I heard you say that previously, and I thought, God, finally someone's saying that, you know, because everybody knows that in the Clinton administration, whether you were a laborer, which I'm a teamster, whether you're a laborer or whether you were a professional or a millionaire, everybody did better. Uh, everybody did better. 
Anybody uh, remember what the stock market did in the 90s? That's right. Went through the roof. That's right. I completely agree. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Like It Show. It's the Tom Like It Show. I 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Like us 101. Coming up in just over 30 minutes from right now. So get on board for your professor coming up here at one 800 800 tom In the meantime, how many of you saw the Barack Obama infomercial last night? Tim on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, thank you so much for taking my call. Great show. Thank you. Just a quick question for you. I'm on the fence. I am a Republican. This is not a trick call. I am on the fence on this one. My only question to you is it may help me, all right? As Obama, Commander-in-Chief, big war breaks out, which you and I both know can happen. How do you feel? What's your greatest fear of Obama handling that situation? No more uh, in fear than I was of Bill Clinton being the president. Um, I, for one, do not believe the president has to have a military background. Uh, the president uh, will be advised in this administration, as they have been in every administration, by people who do have experience in this area. No less than General Colin Powell has endorsed Barack Obama and has made himself available to Obama to be consulted with in just these circumstances. Are you afraid of Colin Powell being the co-pilot? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely. Well, there you go. That's all you need to know. Tom, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. That clarifies it for me. Take me out Kobe style. Wait. Here you go, Tim. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, first time, long time. I've Thank been you. actually listening to you since I was 15. I'm 25 now. Wow. just want to let you know you're a genius, Father. Uh, Thank you, sir. I have a question for you here. and uh, You know, I voted Republican eight years ago, and uh, I went ahead and I decided to vote Democrat four years ago, and now I'm going to go ahead and vote for Democrat again. And I have a question. Uh, in California, I've been noticing there's a lot more Republicans than usual in this election. There's a lot more people voting Republican or promoting Republican. How much of that do you believe is attributed to the race card? Like, how much do you feel that, since you're a person that knows people very well, I trust your judgment. What do you think of that population of people becoming Republican? How much of it is actually involved with... I, I don't think that's true. I think you're going to have the biggest turnout in history. And Democrats still outnumber Republicans in this country. But in California, it's been predominantly Democrat all the time. And I've been just seeing a larger population of, of uh, McCain supporters. Yeah, but you, but, but you don't see that in the actual numbers. So this is uh, uh, wherever you happen to work or live, maybe. But um, in the actual numbers, it's it's pretty much understood uh, that uh, Barack Obama's going to win California. I, I don't think that's even in dispute. I you know, just wanted to know what your opinion on this. Can you that, take me out with a long hit and a uh, screaming orgasm? There you go, Eric. Thank you, Tom. It's one eight hundred five. Oh, Whoa, sorry. Oh God. Oh yes, yes, yes. How do you forget about a screaming orgasm? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Nate on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Going great. I had a general question about Obama. If I vote for him, he becomes president. Is there any way that he could start favoring black people? How? Like, what do you mean favoring black people? I don't know. Like a tax break or what if he appoints that them? That wouldn't even be legal. Oh. So there's not any way. <laughs> no. I did you wait. Blacks like Colin Powell? Okay. All right, so I don't have anything to worry about there. No reverse discrimination or revenge. First of all, Barack Obama's mother was white. 
Oh, yeah? You didn't know that? No, I thought he's black. <laughs> Read a book, for Christ's sake. Holy cow. Some of these people are dumber than a post. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. It's Chris in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, brother? Doing great. Uh, first of all, I want to say I love it that you're talking politics, but not as much as when I hear you talk food and wine. You are People think you're a genius in life. When it comes to food and wine, you're off the charts, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I'm so glad that that last guy preceded my call because it, it hammers home my point. Um, whether people are going to vote Barack, McCain, or Nader, it doesn't matter, but it is so frustrating to listen to people call up and say things like, I'm voting for Barack because he gives me chills. <laughs> and I'm voting for Barack because he can really speak well. Well, don't but you remember, don't you remember uh, when Bill Clinton was president, Oprah? had a panel of women who sexually fantasized about Clinton. That was the topic yeah, for an hour. Absolutely. Why did MTV ask him about his underwear? It's like people get fixated on the most moronic things, and they don't actually get to the meat of the situation. It's like they want to eat the, the salad, but they never get to that, that New York, that Delmonico that's sitting right there for them. And it drives me crazy. People have to get educated. And I don't agree with you on Barack, but I tell you what, Tom, I do appreciate the fact that at least you make a good point for what you believe, why you're going to do it, you're informed. And I appreciate that so very, very much. And if I could say one more thing. Yeah. The, the, in regards to the infomercial last night, it, it drove me crazy. I thought that the title that should have ran before it should have said America Sucks. Now, you may not agree with me here, but I'm going to tell you, I think America is the greatest country that's ever been. I don't There's think any... By the way, I watched that infomercial. Uh, it didn't say America sucks. What it did say is America's in trouble, and it is. Well, there are some things that are troubling. Some the things. The, world... the unemployment rate is going through the roof. I read today in the Los Angeles Times that the unemployment rate will probably go above 8%. That's higher than it was during George Bush the first's administration. Oh, that, I think it's going to go even higher. I agree with you. That well, uh, then, then what was the infomercial supposed to be? Like Ronald Reagan, Morning in America? Isn't this wonderful? No. no. I no, mean, but, but it should. It's, America's not completely wrong. And, Tom, you look at the people that he showed on there. You look at that lady that said she couldn't make up her mind about, do I buy a gallon or a half gallon? That girl had acrylic nails on. How much does it cost to go get your nails done, girlfriend? Well, but that, now we're really splitting hairs. No, but what Or nails. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Hey, I think one thing that I've noticed when talking to people about who they're going to vote for, whether it's Obama or McCain, we need to remember one thing. We're not voting for president for me. I'm not voting for Obama because... He's going to make me a better person. What I'm trying to do is help this country, and hoping my vote helps this country. Just like back in World War II, we didn't produce a single vehicle in this country because everybody put all that they had towards making this country a better place to win. And that's what we need to do today. We need to look at the, the, the president that's going to run this country the best. I don't agree with everything that Obama's going to do. I, I make $75,000 a year, and I'm in a union. But... Like the last caller was saying, we need to be able to, you know, not think about, oh, I can't, I can't vote for this guy because he's going to raise my taxes. He's going to raise the taxes so we can help this country get out of the rut that has been put in by these Republicans in the last eight years. That's exactly right. And I think, you know, like the, the other caller was saying about the lady, you know, not knowing one way to, to buy milk or not, or, or the doctor who called in and said that he and his wife make more than 250000 The reason why he would vote for McCain is because McCain doesn't care about universal health care, doesn't care about, you know, preventative maintenance on the human body. If he's a doctor, he should care about that because that means more people are going to be able to come and see him and they're not going to be going to the emergency room. Well, I, yeah, I, I completely agree with what you're saying there, and uh, I, yeah, and I also, like you, don't agree with everything Obama wants or wants to do or what he says. I don't agree I mean, with everything. I mean, do you think? How do you think? Because this, I mean, one thing I disagree about Obama is that is that this country is built on small business, and if and if this universal health care passes, where the employee employer is going to be responsible for some of our health care costs, 
What does that do to the guy who's got, you know, an auto shop with two or three employees that now he can barely make his, his monthly payments now and now he has to help pay for it? I'm sure, rates? I'm sure that all this is going to be debated in Congress. I'm sure that yeah. whatever Barack Obama is proposing, uh, will not go in unopposed. It, it will be debated and uh, other people will have their say. I right. got to tell you this though. Uh, well, here's one place where I do agree with them on pre-existing conditions. This idea that people keep getting, uh, you know, downsized out of their jobs or laid off or whatever, and they come to a new job and they've got health insurance, but whatever was wrong with them physically before now won't be covered because it's a pre-existing condition. Forget exactly. it. That's got to be illegal. That's got to stop. It's got I to agree, stop. I agree 100%. So listening to those people, that guy has to go back first because his wife, you know, they can't pay the, the, the bills. I mean, that, that, that hits home for me. Because that's something that could happen to me. I, I am single. I'm 34. Never been married. No children. They take more money out of my paycheck every single pay period than the guy sitting next to me that has three kids, the mortgage that he's going to about have foreclosed on. And, you know, so to me it feels like I, I'm not complaining. I know he's not going to be raising my taxes, but I, you don't see me complaining saying I don't have, hey, I don't have a house. I don't have this stuff. I don't have kids. Why am I paying all these taxes? I think it's important that Barack Obama's elected president because he is the best for the country, not necessarily the best for me. And, and that's really all i got to say about it, Tom. Eric, thank you for the call. Tom, 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 like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom Likas show from Hollywood. Just 15 minutes from now, it'll be Likas 101. Get ready for your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're going to jump right in with phone calls straight up at the top of the hour for Likas 101. So uh, get on board. Meantime, the latest estimates from Nielsen are in, and they are revised upward. Have you heard about this? Now, Nielsen Media Research estimates that 33.6 million people watch Barack Obama. 33.6 million. The biggest audience was on NBC. 7.7 million viewers. Like NBC, I think he's going to offer Barack Obama a nightly show in prime time. <laughs> it did a lot better than a lot of the other shows they're running. Tell you what. Every network takes its turn, you know. They, 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 they've all been there. They've all been the uh, the lower rated network, and then they all move up to the top of engine. It's like airlines, you know. There's always one airline that stinks, and the others that are much better. And then one goes bankrupt and moves to the bottom, and then the others move up. And that's how it is. So thirty three point six million. And that's seven more than Nielsen originally thought. Thirty three point six million people watch the Obama ad. That's more than one out of every ten people. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jonathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Okay. Well, this is my situation. I got like two or three questions, honestly. Okay. Um, I am 19. This is my first time voting. Now, this is the thing. I am kind of in a situation that most of my family, they're Christians. I can say I'm a Christian, but I don't want to, um, what they call it, lean into that when I want to vote because I feel like that's my private life, you know? Now, the thing is that I want to know, what can you say to me that will convince me to vote for Obama? Even though, I honestly, I'm already leaning onto Obama because I think he would be a good president. Well, then why do you need me to convince you? Because this is the thing. Sometimes I feel like, I, I'm leaning into him because of the way he speaks. Like a lot of people say, um, oh, I think Obama's a great speaker, you know? And that's why I pay attention to him. But then again, you can say, hey, Hitler was a great speaker. Yeah, that's true. He was. You know, Hitler was a great speaker, and, and look what he did. But come on, don't you know anything about Barack Obama? Yeah, I do know, because the thing is that... I do you have misgivings? Do you have misgivings about, about him? Well, the thing is that, like, I, I listened a while ago and he said, this one Republican called and he said, how do you feel if we would get into a war? And it's like, that's good, but I just feel like there has to be, I don't know, there has to be something that will maybe be like, you know what, this is the guy. 
even though I'm already leaning for him, but I actually I want to be sure about it. You understand? But, well, first of all, you brought up you brought up your assertion that you were Christian. Did that have something to do with your concern? Oh uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. What but does, I don't want to. What does that have? But what does that have to do with Barack Obama? I don't understand. Well, because the thing is, because like I said, my family's Christian, and most of them are going to vote for McCain. And that kind of, and they try to because they're Christian. That, what does being what does being Christian have to do with who you're voting for? I don't know. It's something about that. I've I've listened that a lot of Christians they say that they lean to Republicans because it has some sort of whatever spiritual thing they want to do. Right. You mean like Ted Stevens, who was just convicted on seven felony counts? He's a Republican. Yeah, something like that. You know, something yeah. stupid. But or well, okay, well, I kind of, I kind of. Let, no, then let me move to the next question then, because I think I kind of lost myself and we ain't gonna go nowhere with this. I got a question on Proposition Eight. Somebody was telling me that um Wait, we moved off done, Obama now. We're done with Obama. Yeah, we're done Obama. Thirty so seconds ago, you needed up. to be convinced about Obama. Now you want to talk about the California Proposition Eight? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry. So, are you voting for Obama or not? What was that? Are you voting for Obama or not? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I am. I done deal. I am done with that one. Okay. Okay. Um, Proposition Eight. Is it true that um, if because they or gay people already got the rights, so that's fine. That's right. I, honestly, I got no problem with gay people getting mad because I'm not going to judge somebody for what they want to do with their life. Now, but the thing is that I was hearing that if they go to a church and the pastor or priest um, says no to getting them married, is it true that they are going to have the right to sue the pastor or something like that? No. No? No. Okay. I'm happy with that one because people were trying to say that and I wasn't sure about that one. Churches do all kinds of things uh, that uh, people don't agree with, and uh, they don't pay taxes, uh -huh. yeah. and and uh, they get sued for things like allowing priests to diddle young boys. That's the kind of thing they get sued for. Okay, okay. All right, then. Well, that's okay. And now the other one, um, Proposition 4, are they going to have a certain age that if it does go, if everybody votes no on it, most of it, and are they going to have a certain age that they're going to be allowed to have abortions without the parents' consent? Or is it going to be any age? Well, obviously, no, no. Obviously, there's, it has to do with not being of the age of consent or being of the age of consent, which in California, I believe, is 18. 18. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Yes. And I voted no on that. And do you know, do you know why I voted no on that? Uh, no, I don't. Let me give no, you an example. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 now I'm sure you have a great family and everybody treated you just like peaches and cream, okay? But, uh, <laughs> let's say you're a little girl and you are raped by your father yeah. and you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Under Proposition 4 in California, you would have to ask daddy for permission to have an abortion, the man who raped you. Yeah, that sucks for them. Right. So, yeah. they, they, it's uh, just simply no on Proposition 4. No. Okay, okay. All right, well, thanks. So, um, Tom, I think you're a great guy. You'd say the truth, even if people would like it or not, because it's reality. Now, can you take me out with the Kobe one? Because I've never heard that one before, and I thought that You've was You've never hilarious. heard it before. Where have you been? Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Like us 101 is less than 10 minutes away. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, wow, look at these. Uh, let's say hi here to Keith on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement, Keith? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to make a, a comment about, you know, some of the callers just calling in and whatnot. Um, I think a lot of people really need to go back and listen to uh, Colin Powell. I think he said it best, um, how people should, should look at their president, um, the, the potential president um, in this. We need a president that... Um, it's not a maverick. You know, to me, a maverick is someone who is reckless and, and, and careless. I think that we need a president in office that, that actually sits and thinks, gets all the information, talks to his advisors, and then makes the best decision based upon um, what his uh, advisors and what he thinks um, is effective. 
Sounds good uh, to me. All right. Uh, now you're listening to yourself on the radio, and that, that, of course, means I move on. It's Dan in Portland, Oregon, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you, buddy? Hello. Hello. Hey, um, I'm calling because as I listen to, and I, I'm a McCain supporter overall, and uh, as I listen to Barack, most of the time when I'm listening to him speak, he keeps saying that uh, if you vote for McCain, you're going to get eight more years of the failed policies of the Bush plan. And I, I kind of think about that, and he keeps referencing, look at the market that we're in, look at the economy that we're in. I work in lending. And I watched what I believe to be the meltdown of our markets with the with the uh, housing sector and greedy people on Wall Street offering up loans that should have never been made. And now, you know, you got a bunch of people trying to take advantage of it, investing in homes. Help me, re- help, me rem- help me remember for a second. Did the president do anything to intervene or to stop that? That's my point. I don't think so. There you go. It, that is it that, that I guess that's my point. How is it that it's Bush's policies that have created the meltdown that we've had on Wall Street? Well, Bush's policy has been an overarching policy of reducing regulation. Okay. So, well, then let me ask you this, because something that I saw caught my attention the other day. It was a playback of a clip from like '05 when Greenspan spoke to Senate saying we need to regulate Fannie and Freddie. They're getting out of control. They're lending too radically. What year was that? I think it was an 05. 05. Uh, who was yeah. the majority in the House of Representatives and the Senate in 05? It was the Republicans. And, the, sure. pre- and the president was with what party? Yeah, exactly. But let me ask you this. To my knowledge, McCain was trying to put a bill on the floor that we had Barney Frank and all these guys shot down they were not capable of sh- uh, the president could have introduced that legislation himself did he no but McCain no did. it doesn't matter if mccain did the point is the republicans with whom mccain voted 92 percent of the time didn't do anything to stop it our email address tom at blowmeuptom.com the tom like show